Hello, this is Warlord, and welcome to this episode of Animating in Real Time. What you're seeing here is just a shameless plug for one of my new characters, soon to be available in the marketplace. Anyway, we've got three topics for today. We're going to start off with using reach effectors in the Motion Puppet. Then I'm going to show you how to set your own custom default project. And after that, we're going to go into the cloud fly-through that we teased in the last episode. And it's a very simple project using legacy particles that anybody can do. So, let's get started. Let's look at how the new reach effectors can help us with uh, motion puppet generated motion. What we used to have to do in the motion puppet was we'd lay down our first motion. I'll lay it down about 300 frames or so. Then, before we could lay down our second motion, we'd have to go into the mask tab, and we'd have to mask, otherwise we would get a pretty tremendous jump. So we would come in here and mask out legs and torso, and record it. Trouble is, it would go dead from the waist down, and you'd have to deal with that in other ways, like animating it separately. But now, what we can do, and it's much simpler, We'll go ahead and lay down our motion. Then we'll go to our second motion and just start recording it. And yes, we, we get a jump. So what we'll do is go all the way back to the beginning of the timeline, hit edit reach target, hold down control, select both the feet, and turn on the reach effector. Now, they're effectively nailed down. Of course, you can come in here and make that transition a little sweeter by just playing with this transition handle, and there's other ways to do that. And of course his foot is raising a little bit off the floor. And that can actually just be solved by sampling. If we open up our curve editor, you'll notice it's empty. But what we'll do is come in and we will sample selected parts, left leg, left foot. And we don't really have to see them to sample them or, or work with them or anything. And that's just one of them. But all we wanted to do was just sample it like we did. Because now you'll notice it raises little, but nothing like it was. And that's really good enough to solve this little problem for right now. Because in most cases, people aren't going to be able to see something that subtle. Now, you could go in and do a much better job of that with Curve Editor and things. But just for beginners, this is just a way to do this and look at the difference in the motion. Because this one's going to go dead from the waist down. Or at least here... We do keep some motions, and like I said, you can pose these effectors to a more neutral position between the two motions if you needed to. And of course, the effectors can also be turned off because they're reach dummies. Used to we had to make these things, now they're made for us, and we can turn them off. And that leaves you with the motion. A lot better than what we had to deal with before. Now we could just come in, move his hand out of the way a little bit, and you'd pretty much be finished with that. One of the overlooked aspects of iClone is setting your own uh, default project. This just gets certain basics out of the way, and every project starts off the same. You can use it however you want. In my case, I generally go into the Visual tab, and I don't have any global illumination on. In fact, I don't set any lighting. You can set pre-lighting if you want to, but I don't know really how I'm going to light that scene until I've got some things in it, or unless I've got directions on it. But I usually deactivate any lighting, and then uh, I come in and I set my shadow to as high as I can get, whatever settings you want in here. I don't have my tune shader on. I don't have any other effects on. No global illumination. The most important part to this to me that saves a little time to make sure every project starts off the same 
is over on the render tab you can set it to images if you do images or image sequences or you can set it to video mp4 any of the set you know your quality that you normally use and then set the ratio that you normally output at mine in this case is 1920 by 1080 that's still most of the things I do in then here's the part that's really great you go ahead and set your super sampling uh, sample size high quality shadow things like that and once it's saved like this it's there every time you won't forget to do it so what we have to do now is we have to come over and we have to save and of course I've already done this so we're going to go ahead and we'll save I'll just save over that what you'd have done was just save a new one and then once it's saved you right click and set as default you have to do this right click set as default now every time you start a new project you're going to have the settings that you put in with the lighting on or off and these settings over here it just saves a little time I hope this helps let's take a look at creating a flying through the clouds type shot an establishing shot now it's not going to have any characters in it it's just going to be an out of the cockpit type look so let's go ahead and let's go to sky and let's grab sky one and then let's move it down at least minus 5,000 so we can see the clouds in fact let's go down a little more minus 7,000 then let's uh, come up and create a camera so we can have something to record our motion you can hold down the shift key and move back that would be with your camera key here move back until you're almost out of the sky where it doesn't look right and then just move a little forward make sure you're over here on the first frame when you do that now click this to go all the way to the end or pull your slider all the way over and then move it forward to however far you feel comfortable the shorter the distance the faster it'll look like it's moving and then at first it doesn't look like it's doing a lot but you'll notice it's moving we've got movement going forward and then to accentuate that we're going to do an image layer so I'm going to right click not left click right click drag this over and select image layer Then from there I'm going to drag these over to where they at least cover the entire view screen and now we've added this which once you get to moving you'll notice it gives us movement outside the cockpit now to go even further what we can do is go over to particle and we'll just use legacy particles for this everybody should have this let's see what is it environment we want fog let's pull a fog out here a fog out over here we're just doing it randomly move down the timeline add a few more fog pull them in keep moving down the timeline keep doing the same thing sometimes maybe just one sometimes two or three now we're just we're going to do this in a hurry you'd want to take more time all we're doing is just setting up something to fly by or through and no it's not going to go through the cockpit because of this image layer now let's see what we've got now you notice you're starting to see the cloud we've got movement and it's not that difficult over here we've got a little bit of an empty area so I'd move it back add one anytime it gets too empty anyway you get the picture and then what you do is you can come in and play with the lights to match the clouds you can leave it like it is but we haven't done any lighting we don't have any HDR lighting on or anything but you would need to kind of match this a little more you can also I guess if you wanted to come in to your sky and you could probably look and see most of these have self illumination you could darken that a little oops let's see I should have done that at the beginning of the timeline 
But what we want to do is just darken our self-illumination. And then now, without spending hardly any time, less than five minutes, we kind of have an establishing shot for a fly-through. You'd want to dress it up. You'd want to fill in this area over here. And you want to move these cloud banks here to where they, they don't look like they're stacked up like that. Well, we've come to the end of another episode, and if things work out, what you'll be seeing next time will be how to hook up to a two-handed weapon because things have changed from the old way of doing it. And I say if things work out because uh, even though we have most of these already in the can, the episodes themselves aren't put together in post yet, so we may change our mind. I may change my mind as to what, what goes into each one depending on the email I receive and what questions I have. Anyway, I appreciate you stopping by, and I hope to see you again next time. Hope all this helps.